Hello and welcome back to Seaside Garage. Today I'm going to take a look at the coolant system on the Skoda. The previous video I began fixing the brakes and I actually got some comments, some very helpful comments from, uh, from you guys. Two of you actually spotted that the uh, aligner bar or adjuster bar or whatever it is inside of here is bent slightly on this side. I did not notice that so thank you very much because I think that would have given me some, uh, some troubles along the way. I have ordered a new one of those. It's on its way. I'm going to change that later. Also, I ordered the rubber part for the filler neck, so that is going to be changed in a while when the parts arrive. So today I want to work on something completely different. Um, the coolant system on this car. I have heard that these cars have a reputation for overheating. I think that's pretty much something you actually say about very many old cars because people tend to forget to actually service the coolant system so it clocks up and all cars will overheat if the system is not working proper but on the other hand this is a rear engine car and when the engine is back here you won't have as much cooling air coming over the engine as when the engine is in the front of the car because all of the air blowing through the grill will also cool the engine so rear <laughs> engine cars in my experience tend to, to run a little bit hotter my plan is to drain the coolant and uh, Depending on how it looks, the stuff that comes out, I'm just going to fill it again. If it looks really bad, we're most likely going to have to try to flush it. Other than that, I'm going to change the thermostat. Uh, I'm going to take a look at the water pump. The water pump is a bit funny on this car. I'm going to show it to you later. I'm not going to change it because, once again, I would like to keep as much of the stuff original on the car. And I also would like to keep the expenses just a little bit down. Um, so I'm going to keep that as is. I got some comments uh, telling me that the thermostat on the radiator that kicks the fan in tends to uh, not work on these cars. What I'm going to do is to take it off and test it to make sure that it works. I'm going to make sure that the uh, thermostat switch is working and also that the fan itself is working. If not, then I'm going to order a new one of those. It would also be nice to just have a little break on the brake job. But let's get to work. And let's start underneath the car. Whoop. Right here is two drain bolts, I presume, for the coolant system. I'm going to remove both of them. And hopefully the stuff come, that comes out is not too bad. It would be nice to just see some red coolant stuff coming out. How? <laughs> oh yes, it looks completely clean, completely clean. Wow, oh, I'm so lucky with this car. This is almost spoiled. How lucky I am, it's completely clean. Wow. I didn't even have to drain this. I could have re reused it as if. If it begins turning very muddy, then I'm gonna open more of the system up. But uh, if it keeps on looking like this, then it's fine. And I think what happens very often on cars is that um, the coolant system develops a leak or something like that. And then you lose coolant and then people just fill it with uh, normal tap water and uh, forget about cool adding coolant and stuff like that. And then it will begin to rust very badly in the engine and the coolant system. And then it will clog up due to rust scales and limestone and all that. But because this car has so very few kilometers on it and has been used for so little, I think this is the original coolant from Czechoslovakia that is coming out, which means that it's, it's most likely uh, the right kind of stuff and mixed the right kind of way and nothing has been filled into this system, maybe. That's my theory because this is, I never seen anything like this on an old car. 
I'm gonna let it drain. Next step is I'm gonna take out the thermostat thingy on um, on the radiator, the one that kicks in the fan. And uh, then we're going to test that and we're also going to test the fan itself. Uh, yeah, we can do that while it drains. It should be somewhere up here at the radiator end of the car. And yes, this is the radiator and the fan. And the switch is located right there with the yellow and the red wire. And uh, if it works as the most most system actually works, this switch will have uh, continuity when it heats up and then having connection between the two of the wires. But it, when it's cold, there will be no continuity and uh, it won't switch on. What I'm going to do now is to take the wires off and then yeah, I reattach the battery to the car and see if the fan kicks in when they touch each other. I'm gonna try to test it. And do remember, and I'm saying this quite a lot, that I'm no expert and I'm, I'm learning as I go, so stuff that I do could be wrong, so don't use it as guides, but uh, I think this will work fine. This is my remote starter setup. This is actually just a wire with a switch in between. So um, right now the continuity is broken and these are not connected. The two of these, they are not connected. But, but when I press this button, it is connected. So this is going to be the thermo switch for the moment. And when, if, when the thermo, thermo switch is cold, it's supposed to not be connected. And it heat, when it heats up, it should be connected. So I'm gonna connect these to the wires up here. And now the two wires are connected with my remote starter thingy. So when I press, so when I go ahead and press this button, we should complete the circuit and make the fan spin. Let's try that. <laughs> that was not very well thought through. It is pretty dirty, the fan, so... Uh, there are some cobwebs and some mouse nest and stuff blowing out, but let's try again. It is working. It is working perfect. And almost silently. Pretty impressive, actually. Now I am going to remove the thermo switch itself because I would like to test that as well. And yes, this little switch is a cheap item. But uh, the philosophy for me for this project is to try to save as much as possible or as reasonable at least. And also, even though it's cheap, there is a lot of part, parts on this car that is easy to change and is cheap, but when you add them up, it's not that cheap. So let's test this also because it's fun. Welcome to Seaside Garage Science Lab. What I have rigged up here is a uh, Trankia. It's a Swedish invention. It's very clever. It's a uh, cooking device that is built in together and fits inside all of the cooking balls. That's another story because uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a pretty big outdoor freak. I really like to be in the wild and, uh, and cook on, on fireplaces and these kinds of things and yeah, living in a tipi and stuff like that. That's... What I have done is I have taken a pot and put the uh, the thermo switch inside of. I'm gonna put this, actually I'm gonna turn it on first, but I'm gonna put the pot in. This is just a thermometer that shows the temperature of the water. I could just heat this up and see if the circuit is actually opening, but then I wouldn't know at what temp it would do it. So if it did it at uh, 130 degrees or something, it wouldn't help much. So now I can look at this. I don't know if it shows on the camera. I hope so. Right now it's 41 degrees and I hope that it will open at around 80 or 90. I don't really know, but around that point. These 
will beep when a continuity is achieved, and I will put them on the prongs of the uh, of the switch. So right now it is at 54 degrees Celsius. I'm going to turn the heat up a little bit and see what happens. 57 degrees. 77. 81. Right there at 90 degrees, it opened. Now we should just be able to sw switch it off and let the temperature drop and it should actually close again because that is also important. 88 degrees, it should switch off soon. Of course the switch will cool down a bit slower than the water and also heat up a bit slower than the water. Right there, it's off. Maybe this was overcomplicating things a little bit, but it showed that it actually worked. So that's perfect. I can put it back in knowing that it will switch on at around 90 degrees and that's fine. So now I know that the thermostat is working, uh, the thermostat switch at least in the radiator. Um, at least it worked when I tested it. There's no way of telling if this was the last time it will ever work. I don't think so, but it could be the case. So of course, there is some sense in changing them. On the other hand, sometimes a new part is worse than the old one. Either way, I have fitted it again, and now I'm going to take out the thermostat on the engine. And I'm actually going to change that because I already bought one, and I bought an 80 degrees one just to keep the engine a bit cooler. I don't know what's in it as from, from factory, but we'll see. This will also give me an indi indication about the inside cooling ducts on the engine. I don't think I'm going to flush this system because it's so clean, the coolant that comes out. I'm almost tempted to just put it back in. Uh, but as far as I know, coolant got an expire date where it begins to work badly. And uh, I'm not sure if that's the case, but I know that I'm pretty sure that this coolant is from 86 at least. So uh, it is old. It's older than me. So uh, I'm going to lower the car a little bit and then uh, remove the thermostat and get to work on that. So the thermostat is located over there. So I just have to take out the three 10 millimeters bolt, I think it is. And uh, yeah, hopefully not snap any of them. And then take it out and take the, uh, the thermostat out. So let's do that. Also, the water pump is something that most people would change. But I'm going to, I think I'm going to keep this because I think the flow is pretty good already. So I don't feel the need to change it. That could be a bad decision. But this is a fun uh, water pump because it's actually serviceable. This is a grease cap. And uh, I didn't know that at first. I was a bit puzzled about this. But this is something you see on old tractors and stuff like that. The way it works is you take this one off. And then you pack this area or this hole with grease and then you use the cap to squeeze the grease into the pump and don't over squeeze it but then every once in a while you can go out to the water pump and just give it a little turn and squeeze some more grease into the water pump and keeping it well and greased and maybe some work has been done to this area or the coolant system actually, because and I'm, I'm unsure about this. So maybe some of you uh, who knows a bit more about Skoda than I can tell me, but as far as I know and I can see around the car, most of the Jubilee clips thingies are these kinds, where you spin it and tighten it with, with the use of this. And I'm not sure if that's reusable. I know that I can order new one of these and put them on. But what I think is going on is all the places where this has been changed to a regular Jubilee clips, which is here, here, and on the water pump. Um, I think that is not original. So I think actually this coolant system has been opened once before, because as you can see over here, we got the the weird one in there as well, right here. 
but not on this, not on this. So I think it has been apart before. Wouldn't really make sense to use this kind of duplicates a couple of places and another one everywhere else. So yeah, I think I think that's the case. Let's find a number 10. I believe it's a number 10 at least. So let's see how stuck these are. These can be a nightmare on some cars at least. People who have has changed the thermostat on a mini knows the struggle because that can just turn into a nightmare in no time. And I think this could be as well. Ah, oh, it came. I'm not going to apply a lot of pressure on these. If they don't seem to want to go unstuck, then I will leave them with some penetrating fluid for a couple of hours at least before trying again, because it, it is annoying when stuff like this breaks. Now let's see, it should be a matter of breaking the seal now and taking it out. Oh, that was easy. Like that. I'm going to remove the hose on the uh, water pump as well, just to check the condition inside of there. So a bit rusty water, but uh, nothing too bad. It's, it's pretty clean inside of here. I am just going to change the thermostat and clean the housing up, at uh, of course. I think this is going to be fine. So the old thermostat is a made in West Germany, uh, Vala, not Mala, but Vala, 80 degrees uh, thermostat. And I'm pretty sure that it's not the original one because I would expect it to be have, have been made in Czechoslovakia, but I could be wrong. Maybe some of you know, but it is an 80 degrees, exactly what, like the one I'm putting in, but it, <laughs> the new one is a bit cleaner. I'm gonna clean the housing up and put it all back so, I got it all back together. I'll take a look at the clean, how clean it is. I am really tempted to just put it back in, but I am gonna put some new in because as far as I know, it begins to go bad and I don't really know what happens when it goes bad, but maybe it's not that, maybe the freeze point is altered or maybe it begins to clog up or something like that. So I'm not gonna reuse it, even though it looks like almost brand new coolant. Um, so, Next step is to fill it with new coolant. Right here is a uh, bleeder screw for the coolant system that I'm supposed to just be able to open. Another thing when refilling a coolant system on a car, it's a very important thing to open the heater tab to make sure that the uh, heater matrix is open for, uh, for, for flow. And another thing is I should fill it now and then bleed the system using the bleeder screw. Um, and then I should actually start the car up and make sure that everything goes around and recheck the coolant level and all that and make sure that both the hoses coming from the engine and to the engine is getting warm to make sure that there is circulation. But I'm not gonna do that in this video because the next video I will get the car, I will service the car a bit more and get it to run a bit better. And I don't want to do that right now with the uh, with the completely open gas tank right uh, right next to the engine because it's just a hazard. I, I would like to get it closed off. There's too much. There's too many fumes in the area to uh, to begin working at that area. So uh, anyway, let's fill some coolant into this. <laughs> you can hear it gurgling around. I'm gonna mix some more of this. Wow, I can hear the entire car gurgling right now. This car got a drinking problem. But let's try to open the valve now and see if we can purge some air out of it. Oh, we can hear it. I can hear it at least. <laughs> this is effective. Now there's no more air coming out. 
but I can hear the radiator gurgling. Yeah, it came. I'm not completely sure it's completely bled, but it's pretty close and I think I'm gonna have to wait to do the last bit of bleeding on this system until the uh, until I can actually start the car up again. But there's water in this hose and in this hose coming from the thermostat. So I'm pretty sure it's actually pretty well bled already. But yeah, this is all. The uh, system is pretty much bled now. Of course, I will do more when the engine is running, but it seems to be fine. This car just is so nice to work on, really. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one where we most likely will finish up the brakes or do some more servicing on the engine. I'm still finding a slight misfire on it, so uh, yeah, see you in the next one.